Good evening. Thank you, everybody, for attending public hearing on the proposed town education budget for 2014-2015 fiscal year. My name is Brad Sullivan. I chair the Board of Finance. The Vice Chair is Ona Nadel. Our regular board members are Leah Saunders, Valerie Nye, Dennis Donovan, and Tom Hollinger. The board's alternate members are Lori Santos and Bruce Farmer. As far as the town's proposed operating budget, several workshops were held, as usual, in the month of February. We examined every department's budget and received input from the selectmen, first selectmen, and the department heads where appropriate. All of these hearings were duly noticed and open to the public. After we did our budget review, some difficult choices were made and the budget numbers were finalized. The Board of Finance approved the following. The town budget, as proposed, is $16,065,128. The Board of Education budget is $32,431,098 for a total proposed budget of $48,496,226. The proposed increase in overall spending is a little more than 4% from last year, and the mill rate if these budgets are approved, would increase by less than one mil, or 8.89 mils to be exact. There is a market increase in the capital improvement budgets to ensure that infrastructure is maintained and for payment of debt service. While assembling these spending plans, the board considered estimated surpluses in multiple ways. While there are still two and a half more months left in the current fiscal year, we have attempted to project where budget line items may come in over or under budget, as well as the revenue trends to date. In the budget presented to you tonight, there is a revenue line item called appropriated surplus. This totals $150,000. This line item represents one use of our surplus to reduce the tax burden. Another use for the town surpluses or reserves was used to lower the capital budget request in total. Finally, in various line items that, were, that we expect to realize surpluses, there have been requested budget reductions. All of these measures serve to effectively return some portion of the surplus to the taxpayer by lowering the burden for fiscal 2015, but also with a mind towards maintaining a steady credit rating and replenishing our reserves or rainy day fund. We are winding down to the budget referendum. The annual budget meeting pursuant to our town charter is May 7, 2014, which is the first Wednesday in May. The annual budget meeting, per the charter, adjourns to referendum by machine ballot. The re referendum this year will be on May 14th from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. in this building. With respect to this evening's public hearing, if you would like to make a comment about the proposed budget, please come forward and put your name and address on the sign-in sheet. Please direct your comments to the proposed budgets only. Please take note that there is a reasonable time limit for any person's remarks. We're not going to have the clock going, but you know, just give everyone a chance to speak. In the interest of expediency, I reserve the right to impose a time limit, which most of you know I don't usually do. Your comments are a very important part of this process, and we're all here to listen to your comments about these proposed budgets. Finally, while we appreciate your attendance here tonight, please be cognizant of the fact that this board's responsibility is to propose reasonable spending plans for the operations of this municipality and its school district. This means taking into consideration the thousands of people who are not here tonight. Town budget next. Who wants to talk about the town budget? You want to talk about the town budget, Kurt? I'll, I'll uh, defer to others first. Okay. Who'd like to go first? There's some library people here. I'll, I'll speak first. As a, uh, as a resident and as a superintendent of schools, uh, thinking about the budget as a whole, uh, ultimately the town budget is what Willie and, and all of the departments on the town side present, as well as the Board of Ed budget. It is ultimately one budget that supports the services that are provided to all residents in this town. And the, the one benefit that I, that I want to really address publicly is the work that our Department of Public Works does for us with regard to 
but particularly this last couple seasons of winter, uh, maintaining the fact, uh, maintaining our roads and keeping our, uh, our, our ability to keep our schools open. Uh, we have only uh, five emergency closing days this year, where most everyone else has seven, eight, or nine. And that is in large part due to the work that our public uh, works department does. In addition to that, um, while not a, a, a big portion of the line item, certainly our um, fire department uh, provides a huge resource for us um, as a community, and they do wonderful things for us in the public schools as well in terms of um, fire support days and fire safety, etc. And then ultimately, the relationship we have with the police department is um, remarkable. Um, the, the coordination with the chief and his staff uh, with our work in the schools, um, the collaboration that takes place at that point is remarkable. Having an SRO in the school system is a real plus for our uh, community, uh, for our students, and, and ultimately for the overall feeling, the good feeling of safety. Um, since a year ago, um, we've, they've implemented the community policing program where every single day in all four of our schools, a police officer on the beat shows up at the school walks through, checks doors, talks to kids, talks to the administration, making sure that there is a presence in our community. Um, and it's a powerful, positive statement that our community has made for um, the overall safety for all of our kids and for us. So on behalf of the Board of Ed, I want to uh, publicly support all of the efforts that the town has put into their side of the town budget and support it wholeheartedly. Thanks. Uh, good evening, my name is John Olson. I live at 101 Pratt Road. Uh, at first, I want to thank the Board of Finance uh, for all the good work that they're doing and all the volunteer time that they put in. I also want to say the same to the Board of Education. Uh, I moved here 19 years ago with my wife, and uh, I've lived in a few towns in Connecticut. And I'd just like to say that there's a quality of life uh, that comes with this community. And you don't get anything unless you invest in it. Uh, you know, my children are grown and they're uh, working uh, in New York City here and, and, and also in Connecticut. And, you know, I, I'm on a fixed income now because I just retired. But, but I truly believe that if I want to live in a civilized society, if I want to see economic development, if I want to see the kind of town that has the facilities and the things that we've come to enjoy and maybe sometimes we should appreciate them more, then we have to understand there's a cost for that. And I, I know that there's been a lot of struggle to try to find ways to save money, to, to do things better, but let me say this in 19 years. When I came here 19 years ago, this town didn't look anything like it looks like today. And I can tell you one thing, I'm proud of where this town is going, not just our city, but the people who have moved here, and we want to continue to attract people to move here, but it's got to be a partnership between us and the government that we elect. And again, I want to thank you know, all the volunteers, and I know there's always difference of opinions, but regardless of which side you come down on these things, I think too often people don't appreciate the time that you put in for the big pay of the one big zero that you all get for serving us. Uh, we've cut their budgets any more than what they get, so. Again, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. Mr. Cross's points about the Board of Education benefiting from the town uh, is well made, and I'm going to go into it in great depth in a second. 
Uh, also, I'm not really surprised that Mr. Olson uh, is in favor of uh, the budget. Um, he, as you may know, I believe was president of the, what was the AFL-CIO, the, the Public uh, Employees Union. So he's very much in favor of, uh, of bigger budgets, uh, no matter how big they are. Am I, if, I'm, if I'm incorrect, please correct me. Is that not correct, Mr. Olson? Pardon me? I think it's important to consider the source, and I think full disclosure is always so. Uh... Anyway, the town of Clinton has continued to price itself in terms of the bill rates out of the market compared to adjoining nearby shoreline towns. The fact uh, drives down property values further, discourages economic development that is needed to help shoulder the tax burden, and further inflates the mill rate. It is a vicious cycle. Those who attempt to dismiss these facts with equalized mill rates of per capita tax data completely miss the point. No one pays equalized taxes, nor do they pay per capita taxes. Mill rates are what determine the tax burden. If Clinton goes forward with a proposed budget, it will extend this very destructive cycle. And this is, Clinton is the line at the top. This would be the new, the new mill rate projected. These are the ones for the towns that are either Killingworth or on either side of us. Even though Clinton's town budget represents only one third of Clinton government overall, the Clinton government overall spending, it must compete with education with the education budget that represents the other two thirds of spending. And while two thirds of the money assessed by the uh, assessed, collected, and administered by the tax assessor, tax collector, and finance director is spent on education, the Board of Education expects the town budget to bear 100 percent of the finance director's salary instead of the half, as has been the practice in previous years. This is a big step backwards for the town, particularly when 1.5 million was spent on expanding the town offices in the old PD to accommodate consolidation of the two finance departments in one location. Some ask why it matters whether costs are attributed to the town or to the education budgets. The tax taxpayers have to pay it either way. So here's why. When the Board of Education does not reflect education spending borne by the town, it is not counted toward the state's minimum budget requirement as it should be. That is why the school resource officer should be included on the education budget as a police, as a police service. The SRO should be on the education budget and be required to be, a, to be DARE certified and tasked with implementing the DARE program. The elimination of the program is a direct result of leading the town's budgets and being a free rider on these town services. How much do these services add up to? And I've got them for the uh, itemized, but they add up to $612,000, of which about $434,000 could reasonably be attributed to the Board of Education. If the Board of Education's fair share of these costs were shifted to the education budget, it would reduce the education budget surplus and free the town funds for more adequate public safety. One of the long-term trends that is pushing the town budgets higher with no benefit to taxpayers are Clinton's unfunded pension obligations. For example, the annual required contribution for police pensions is budgeted to increase $75,000 or 8% to $975,000. This present, represents 39% of the police payroll in addition for defined retirement benefits. And over 90% of what is contributed is paid out this year in benefits to current retirees. The unfunded pension obligations grow by over a million dollars annually. Police and other pensions should be converted to 401ks as quickly as possible. There is another cost about which few people are aware. By contract, police employees uh, receive 13 paid holidays issued in lump sum payments twice a year in June and December in addition to their salaries. In addition, officers who actually work on holidays receive a premium. The lump sum uh, sums add up to $96,595, and the premium pay amounts to $25,350. If the feather bedding portion of this provision was eliminated, there would be adequate funding for required feet on the street and administration. As it is, otherwise unnecessary, difficult choices have to be made. 
Given all these factors, the Board of Finance will continue to trend by trend of budgets defeated at referendum if you insist on proposing an 853,544 or 5.6% increase in the town budget for 2014-15. Restoring amounts that the Board of Selectmen trend does not afford government consensus needed to advance this as a credible attempt at a budget that voters should approve. Uh, and I, I would question the question someone who spoke earlier about the um, about the cost of living, the, the cost of living index, according to Bureau of Labor Statistics, increased 1.1 percent over the last 12 months, regardless of how long your present sticks are. The objective should be to keep any tax levy within the CPI. So, how might the budget be adjusted to achieve this objective? The capital improvements budget increased 244,000. $500 or 67% last year. And an additional $298,000 or 49% increase is proposed in the budget this year. Keeping that flat for one year would have the biggest impact on the proposed budget. Accepting the police budget proposed by the Board of Selectmen would save $52,700. Trimming public works increase uh, from 7.5% to 3.8% would save $60,000. And I might add, adding uh, to that staff at this time is just not justifiable. Keeping the finance director's position a shared position with the Board of Education saves 90% of the increase proposed in the finance budget of $46,439,000. So altogether, these, these adjustments would allow you to re reduce the uh, increase in spending to 2.6%, which is only one-third of Clinton government spending, as Mr. Cross sort of observed earlier. So if you took that along with the education uh, budget savings, a reduction of $689,952, and the town portion, 457880 you would reduce the proposal. Understand, this is not a reduction in the budget. This is a reduction in the increase in the budget. This is trimming the increase in the budget by $1,147,000. And the tax levy in that case would go up four, it would go up instead of 4.1 percent, go up 1.1 percent, which should be your objective. It is, it is it is within the powers to propose sensible and acceptable education and town budgets to the taxpayers. Please spare Clinton another round of budget defeats. Hey, good evening. Um, Phil Stengel. Um, I just want to, uh, in interest of full disclosure, I'm uh, chairman of the police commission until they throw me out. Uh, I do want to talk, uh, just touch on a couple of things Mr. Carr raised about the police department. Uh, I think he's correct in that we, and it's not limited to the police department, that we have to move towards a 401k type retirement situation. It is a big burden on the town. Uh, he also mentioned uh, the way the holiday pay uh, uh, benefit accrues uh, to uh, the police department or, or the police officers. Those things have to be negotiated uh, with the police union and I would be in support of negotiating those things. Uh, unfortunately, our contracts was signed recently, uh, these issues uh, were not successfully negotiated, and, uh, and so they're going to have to come up uh, next time. Another one that I, he didn't mention that I would mention is some sort of health requirement or health maintenance requirement for police officers, but that's also something that has to be negotiated, but I would be uh, fully in support of that. Now, as far as the town budget goes, uh, you can imagine I'm speaking in favor of the town side of the budget, the municipal budget. Uh, in the police department, we have currently spent about $288,000 in overtime and will far, uh, exceed $300,000 by the end of the year uh, by quite a bit. And there's a reason for that, and the reason is we had a terrible string of uh, long-term injuries over the past year and a half. And when officers are out, uh, we can't simply say, well, Officer Jones is not here today, we'll just do without him. We have minimum staffing requirements, 
for the safety of the public and the safety of the officer. So when an officer is out, for whatever reason, we have to replace them. And it got to the point where officers were working so much overtime, as indicated by the $288,000, that they had to be ordered in. They can't refuse to work. If they're ordered in, they're ordered in, they have to show up and work. But it got to the point where nobody wanted, you just couldn't work anymore. We were fatiguing, uh, just, I, I use the term killing them, not literally, but uh, it affects their health, affects their personal lives, and it was a terrible situation. Uh, now it will reserve its, uh, resolve itself a little bit as officers come back off injury, but there will always be injuries. This information, of course, was brought to the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Finance, and they did agree to help us out. Uh, there is one new officer in the budget for next year uh, at a cost of about $60,000 plus benefits, total package probably in the $80,000, $85,000 range when you add in all the benefits and the pension and so forth. So I, I thank the Board of Selectmen and I thank the Board of Finance for uh, funding that one position. And one position doesn't sound like a, a lot, but it'll, it will help us a lot. Uh, in addition to that, the workload just, you know, keeps going up, going up, calls for service. We are the first responder for medical calls in town. Uh, the ambulance service is having trouble staffing during the daytime and officers show up. You're going to be darn glad when they show up. So uh, for those reasons, uh, for that amount of overtime we've spent, we could hire three officers. But if we get one, we're very appreciative, appreciative of that. We, again, we thank the Board of Finance and the Board of Selectmen for uh, seeing the need and, uh, and doing that. And uh, for that reason, we hope the budget passes. Thank you.